Welcome to my channel, Birds and a Bookworm. I'm the bookworm. So today I wanted to just do it. I have watched BookTube since like 2013. So what I'm gonna do today is tell you everything I've read this year, but before you freak out and leave, we're gonna just, we're just gonna, we're just gonna speed through it. And I'll tell you mostly like the star rating, what it's about. I have not read that many books. I am a full-time college student again. So I've got my handy dandy notebook. And the first book that I finished was in March. And I'm gonna try and be super tech savvy put the cover here because I read it on my Kindle. And it is The Last Suppers, Famous Final Meals from Death Row. And it is by Ty Treadwell and Michelle Vernon. So I give this one three stars. It was not, it wasn't a good, it wasn't, okay? I liked the concept and I really liked the actual discussion of the meals. I am not gonna lie, I wanted, I wanted pictures and I never quite got over that disappointment. Dad jokes, but not even the good kind, puns. Absolutely no citations, nothing. I have no idea where they got this information. They could have pulled it out of their ass. So like, that's a cool idea if that's true. So the next book I finished was in May. I don't have a review here because I reread After Hours by Yuta Nishio, maybe? By After Hours is a girl loves girl manga that is really cute. It's just really cute. Pretty much, what's her face here? Doesn't really know what she wants to do with her life. She's just kind of existing right now and she meets this girl who's quirky and is really into music and DJing and like doing shows um and she ends up hanging out with her there's a romance and very cute I gave this one like five stars because it was gay and I hadn't read a lot of gay manga at this point and that's pretty much all I want out of manga now is a uh, uh, lesbian Instead of doing this totally in chronological order, just so you know, I did read the second book. Um, I haven't read the third manga yet. I really want to, but I gave this one five stars as well. I think the artwork's really cute. It may just be the style because they're sort of emo and, you know, punk rock and all that shit, but I like it. So the next book I read was in May, and that was The Couple Next Door by uh, Barry Lupin. I'm gonna maybe, uh, yeah, you remember this one, don't you? You wanna know why Piggy remembers this one? Because she chewed the cover. Yeah, you see that? Mm -mm -mm. So this one is about a couple who moves into, uh, well, I think they move into their new house. They have a very new baby and they're going next door for a dinner party, which this is all in the back cover, I'm not showing it. And when they come back, their baby is missing. It's, it's not great, but for a short get me back into reading because I was barely reading at the beginning of this year, I enjoyed it. It was just a fun sort of beach read for me because I like, I, I love thrillers, suspense books like this. Enjoyed it. Three stars. You agree? Yeah. July was a bit better of a reading month because I was having to read for a class. It was, I don't know, it was a literature class. But I reread Speak. I've actually read Speak before I read it um, like a few years ago. I didn't have to read it, like I said, in middle or high school because I was. It was, it's a really good book. It's written current day, it's more like a teen level. I love this book. It's really good. At the end of the day, five stars. So what I read and compared this to was a piece of 1950s literature, which is Good Morning, Miss Dove. All right, so this is not my original copy of Good Morning, Miss Dove, but this is one I bought because the margins were wider. I wanted to tab my books, but if you're someone who has old books, 
have to be pretentious. But even just the glue from the taps can ruin the page and stain them or peel it. So even though this is an old copy as well, it's not as old as my old, old, old. This one is such a cute copy, even though it no longer has a dust jacket because it has cute little illustrations. I pretty much just tabbed any quotes that I used. This is about a teacher who is well known among the community. She's a bit strict. And while maybe kids don't appreciate her when she taught them, they definitely later in life really appreciate what she did for them. So she ends up falling ill and it's got some kind of weird quirky scenes and it also has a lot of different perspectives of the kids who she taught remembering memories of her. I don't know if it's technically considered a classic. I think it should be. It's a really nice piece and I don't know. I like seeing this. This is the contrast of like what happens in the 1950s with literature. Uh, I give Miss Good Morning Miss Dove four stars. I really like it. It stayed with me. I think it's, I think it's good. So these two cla uh, classes, these two books I read for my classes, Romeo and Juliet and The Taming of the Shrew. I've read a couple others by William Shakespeare, but I haven't quite finished, finished them. Um, so I'm not gonna count that I read them until I actually finish them. I have read this before as well in middle school. I did have to read it. I don't like Shakespeare very much. I appreciate what he's done for literature. I really just don't like it. Just like that. Okay, look. I gave Romeo and Juliet three stars because I appreciate it, but I don't like it. One that I did actually enjoy, Taming of the Shrew, I gave three stars as well. But listen, I enjoyed The Taming of the Shrew more for how it was written as a play. But I hate the misogyny. I'm not going to lie. I hate that at the very end, out of nowhere, this really kick-ass character, Kat, I, I forget, Katarina, whatever her name is, I called her Kat, that she is such a strong, opinionated, outspoken woman, right? And then in the end, she turns into the perfect wife. I don't, I, if you could cut that ending off, I would. I love how fierce and intimidating she was to men and that no one could tame her. I really liked that part and I liked how it was written. So I feel like if you were to read Shakespeare beyond me, I'm like, oh, read Romeo and Juliet because you have to. Yeah. This one's good. This one I actually, I actually liked and legitimately read and made a lot of notes. So it was like a really immersive experience talking back and forth with the book as I read it. So even though it's three stars, I did like, I liked that one. Another three star read. I like this one as well. This one, <laughs> September. Wow, we went another long time without reading. So whenever I, and this is really a right now though, okay? Whenever I go to an airport and fly, I always buy a book. Do I always bring multiple books? Yes. Did I bring three books on this last trip in September when I went home to visit my family? I did. Hardbacks, two. Yeah. All right. What did I do? Buy two giant hardbacks and this. I have read all of Thomas Harris's books, I think. So I picked this up from him because I'm like, wow, he wrote something else again. Hey, Tommy. Missed you, buddy. This one's kind of a suspense. It's kind of a thriller. There's just a lot of shady shit going on. And then she's kind of involved in it because she's the housekeeper for this house. There are some like snippets on here saying how Carrie Mora is a lovable character. Like you're going to love her. Yes. I don't think she needs to be as humble and subdued as he represented to her in the book to be lovable, considering everything that she's been through. She's really kick-ass. So the whole point of why I finished and read this was just because I wanted her to get what she deserved in life. I like that it's short. If you like Thomas Harris, read it. Support him writing something that is just not about Hannibal again, even though we love Hannibal. We, we love Hannibal in this household. Favorite cannibal by far. All right, three stars for that. All right, we read another book in September, good for us. So I read, I kept this on my bedside table because it's 12 short stories. It's Sticky Fingers by J.T. Lawrence. She, yeah, so she lives in South Africa, which I didn't initially know when I picked this up. They were just dark, creepy, sort of mentally twisted short stories. And I was like, yeah, perfect nighttime bedside reading. Obviously, I gave it like four and a half stars. They are weird. 
okay? I enjoyed every single one. Some of them I love. I I wouldn't even say, don't even go off the blurb off the pack. Just read them. Oh, another manga in September. All right, so this one is Chasing After. Ayo, Ayo. I am sorry, I can't pronounce this. Ayo Koshiba. That's embarrassing. So guess what? If you couldn't tell, this is... It's gay. So it's another girl loving girl story. This one is about a girl who remembers one of her classmates that she sort of had a little romantic thing with. They end up just kind of not being involved after high school. It was cute. I gave it four stars. Okay, so I guess I enjoyed it because it was cute. Walking away from it, like coming back from it, I don't feel like I would buy the other books. I might just because it's gay. I'll admit it. To Catch a Pirate by Jay Parker. Look, I had this. Whoops. Sometime in middle school I bought this book. I realize now I have probably a lot more like first edition of books. But this was the first book I bought because I saw that it was like a first edition pirate romance. And I loved those. And I loved this. And I still love this. I read it like four or five times and I was in a slump this year, really, but I've been in a slump. Look, is it that good? No. I think it's still well written enough, but I will keep this and I reread it and I still give it five stars. All right, so the last book I finished, I never wrote down yet, and it is a audiobook that I read and it counts. We are not gatekeeping books here, okay? So I read The Truth Witch by whatever what's-her-face names is. I don't remember right now. I'm gonna probably give it, I wanna say like 3.75 stars, but I'll probably end up going just like, all right, four stars. I really liked it. I liked the magic. It was pretty easy to grasp for a somewhat high fantasy. Mostly that book, I really wanted it to be gay because there was so much potential between this friendship relationship. When I didn't get that and I knew I wasn't gonna get that, I was definitely shipping a little bit of the romancy romancy shit in it, but I wanted more of that. I don't know if I wanted smut, but maybe I did. Maybe I did. We're just gonna be honest. Maybe I did, I didn't get smut. But I really do like plot. I really like stuff where you're on the run. I will be reading the other books. Um, the narrator may have had an effect on why I didn't love, love the book, but I did enjoy like listening to this on my uh, listening to that book on all my commute. Now this has been Birds and a Bookworm. I'm Riss. Thank you for hanging out, and a special thank you to my mom and the two friends watching this and my wife. That's probably all there is. Bye. Oh,